Hello and welcome back to the Circuito de Jerez. And Nieto nestled into the stunning Andalusia hillside. Famous for its sherry and wine, but it's also famous for this classic circuit, the Circuito de Jerez. And Nieto, 4.4 kilometers in length, five left turns and eight right turns, and we're in four. Another cracking battle. It is time for the FIM. CEV Repsol Moto3 Junior World Championship riders to to strut their stuff along this ribbon of tarmac. 16 laps in glorious southern Spanish sunshine and it is getting warmer out there. It's visibly warmer than it was an hour ago. The sun rising high in the sky. There's not a cloud in sight and it's perfect conditions really for the Junior World Championship riders to complete their only race of today. Round three taking place here on Saturday and then round four for the Moto3 Junior World Championship, Moto2 European Championship and Hawkers European Talent Cup taking place tomorrow. It really is a stunning circuit, stunning scenery. A classic venue that's thrown up plenty of drama in the past and plenty of drama already this season. But here we take a look at the Portimao round and it was Acosta that started from pole with Lorenzo Fallon in second, but the number five jumped the start and you just saw there he had to do a couple of long lap penalties, which ultimately cost him a chance of being in this podium fight. As Artigas led, it was a great battle between him and the number 37 of Pedro Acosta and then the number 25 of Fernandez leading from the forefront. It really was an impressive display again from Raul Fernandez's younger brother, David, uh, David Salvador there on the number 38 and across the line, just like they did in Estoril, it was Xavi Artigas and Pedro Acosta, but this time the number 37, Pedro Acosta, pipped Artigas and it's the duo, the Spanish duo who lead the championship on 45 points each heading into Jerez rounds three and four and it really does look set to be another cracking race and Pedro Acosta will start on the front row. Artigas isn't on the front row, but he's not too far behind in P4. And incidentally, talking about Pedro Acosta, he's coming off the back of a wonderful couple of weekends at the Red Bull ring in the Red Bull Rookies. He won all four races over in Austria and that's just yet more proof of the talent that we're seeing from Pedro Acosta because just like the Moto3 Junior World Championship is, that is a really, really competitive class and to win all four races is, uh, is a very impressive stat to behold. And in those races was this man, the number seven, Daniel Munoz, the 14-year-old from Sevilla. Now he's 15th in the championship this year in the 2020 Moto3 Junior World Championship and we'll hear from him shortly about how he grabbed pole position here in Jerez. Hi Maria, I'm with the result uh, for a pole position. Uh, thank you to the team for do great job. But today, uh, more gas. Thank you. Yeah, so more gas, that is certainly what he's going to need to be doing today. Uh, it's been a little bit of a difficult run of it in the uh, Junior World Championship this year so far. He's had a fourth, uh, 25th and a 12th at the minute, so uh, a pole position here. It's looking like he's on for his best weekend yet. But saying that, in warm-up this morning, he was only 24th and about 1.7 off the pace. Obviously, it's only warm-up. But the conditions here at the moment are only 23 degrees ambient and 27 degree track. It's a lot different to what they had yesterday and even on free practice on Thursday. So I just wonder whether Daniel might look, just be struggling a little bit with the cooler conditions compared to yesterday and the day before. Yeah, potentially. It's his best qualifying of the season by country mile. He was 14th in Esteril and 15th in Portimao. So to stick it on pole is very impressive from... Uh, Daniel, who calls himself the race tiger, so he'll be hoping to get his claws out here 
in her F and hoping to get his claws out here in her F2 is the reigning European Talent Cut champion. It is Ethan Guevara on the open bank gas bar. Great performance from him in qualifying. He was uh, a winner here last year in the European Talent Cup and it's a win that secured him that crown. Of course, and he's another one that was in Red Bull Rookies over the two Austria GP weekend with MotoGP. Uh, a real talent and prospect for the future is Izan Guevara. And so is this man, Pedro Acosta. As Elliot said, he absolutely dominated the Red Bull Rookies rounds. He took four victories, won both races over both rounds. So, uh, and, and the most impressive thing about those races was that it wasn't just as though he was quicker than everyone else and he cleared off from the front. He was in the pack battling with them and four times in a row he came out on top. So fantastic race crap from Pedro Acosta and you wouldn't doubt him of doing it again here, would you? No, absolutely not. And that's that's the two words I was going to mention, Jack, race craft. It's, all, it's obviously all well and good being able to clear off and if you can, then absolutely do it. But proving that you've got the pace in a battle and to come out on top in four races, not just one or two, but four races on the same track with a whole bunch of riders uh, challenging you is, is mighty impressive. And there is the joint championship leader. We've just seen Xavier Hart Artigas. He was... He got a podium here last year, uh, but he'll be hoping for more than just a, a P3 result in 2020. Yeah, and of course, Artigas, a man that, obviously, as you say, joint championship leader and a man with world championship pedigree as well. So certainly nothing will phase him that's about to come up in these next 16 laps. And I doubt anything will with Gerard Ryu either. It's actually his fourth year in the class. So uh, he's one that really needs to be starting to head up towards them podium places if we want to see him progress onwards uh, he's at an 11th and an 8th so far this year and this is his best qualifying in 5th um, so we'll see if he can get into the lead pack and just cling on and try battle his way out for a podium yeah 8th in the standings at the moment for Gerard Ryu 13 points so he's, he's already 32 adrift of Acosta and Artigas but we're early, into the early stage of the season and that can all change in the blink of an eye and Another rider who we saw on Red Bull Rookies Cup duty is this man, Daniel Holgado, the Open Bank Aspar rider. He got four podiums over in Austria and Styria on the uh, on the KTM Red Bulls. Uh, so he's another rider who comes into her F off the back of some great performances. And he, uh, he finished P6 here in 2019 on board the Australia Lithium machine and then a DNF in the second race. So he won't be wanting to repeat that DNF and this is his best qualifying of the year. So look out for Daniel Holgado in the race as we focus in now on seventh. That's Nicholas Spinelli, the Reale Avinci MTA junior rider. He's seventh in the championship. His best result so far is a P13 in Estoril. And this is, like many others, his best qualifying of the year. He's qualified 19th and 20th in Estoril in Portimao. So spearheading the third row is a great result on... I was going to say Saturday, but it's not a Saturday. It's Saturday, so Friday <laughs> yeah. in the qualifying for Spinelli. Keep getting those days confused. And also, just that we're uh, watching around the track yesterday, we caught the tail end of Spinelli actually tipping off at turn eight. He just took the front there and ended up in the gravel. He was looking at his hand. I think it was his right hand, but he was, he was all fine. So he lines up on the grid full health. And uh, we're looking at the man in eighth place just next to him. David Salvador is also a Red Bull rookie. Picked up a P5 in one of those races. Uh, over in Austria uh, and he's looked pretty good this year obviously he was on pole for the very first race in Estoril uh, but now here back in fifth uh, eighth sorry it's actually his worst qualifying of the year but he's a man that races well he always seems to be in that lead pack and uh, he's a fairly big boy as well so he can get his elbows out absolutely him and um, Adrian Fernandez are the only two riders other than Acosta and Artigas to have a podium finish this season um, as we focus on the lead junior talent team rider, Takuma Matsuyama, this is his best start slot. He f uh, qualified 10th in Portimao, but just when we uh, mention the junior talent team, we've got to bring up, there's a couple of injuries to see uh, Dorna Sports CEO Carmelo Espeleta showing his face. That's good to see. Uh, yeah, back to the junior talent team, and yesterday in qualifying was a bit of a disaster. Um, Bill Van Erd crashed in the second qualifying practice and unfortunately fractured his... Uh, left femur and he's awaiting surgery as we speak so we wish the Australian uh, a get well soon and also Mario Aji he uh, crashed in the opening qualifying practice and suffered 
uh, three fractured or broken metacarpal bones in his hand. Um, so the junior talent team are two down, unfortunately, and Bill Van Erd was due to start from P8. That would have been his best start slot. So wish both Bill Van Erde and Mario Waggi a very speedy recovery. Yeah, huge shame for those two. Hope they're watching on wherever they are, watching these boys about to go to battle in the in the sun down here in the ref, and uh, hopefully we see them back out on track fairly quickly. Here is the pole man's teammate, David Munoff. It's pretty good qualifying for David. He's, he's been around this sort of area in qualifying. He was 10th in Estoril and 14th in Portimao. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't finish the race in Portimao, but he did pick up a 12th in Estoril, so we know he can be there or thereabouts with that lead pack, and he was another one of those Red Bull rookies, and he went really well, actually. He picked up two seconds and a third over the four races there in Austria. So certainly look out for David Munoff, as well as Daniel Munoff. Here is Scott Ogden, then, the British talent team rider, part of the junior talent team setup. Great qualifying for Scott. He starts from P12, his best result in his maiden full season in uh, the Junior World Championship. He did compete here last year in Jerez with the team as a replacement rider for Yuki Kuni when he was injured um, and finished P24 and P22 there on his opening uh, race day in the Junior World Championship. So look out for Scott Ogden. He's going well this year. He unfortunately missed the two Styria Red Bull rookie races through injury, but he's back and raring to go from 12th on the grid. And speaking of the grid, here it is then. So it's Daniel Munoz on pole from Izan Guevara and Pedro Acosta, your championship leader. Row two is Xavi Artigas, Gerard Rio, Daniel Holgado from Nicolas Spinelli, David Salvador and Takuma Matsuyama. Spearhead in row four is Diogo Moreira from David Munoz and Scott Ogden, Adrian Fernandez, Joe Coso and Marcos Rueda, Fusco, Masaki and Julian Giral complete row six. On row seven. Oh, no, okay, we've, we've skipped one. No worries. From 28th, it is Garcia, Diaz, and Watley. And Busari, Felon. Felon's had a, a pretty poor qualifying here. Actually, had a grip penalty by the looks of it. Philip Rehack, Arita, and Rouge. Yeah, not sure why we skipped the, the middle pack, but we should be seeing some of those riders make their way up, including Max Cook, who starts from. 19th, watch out for the British rider. He's finished seventh twice this year. So Max Cook will be hoping he can at least challenge for the top 10 alongside his junior talent team teammates and Scott Ogden and Takuma Matsuyama. Yeah, it's been there. Ooh, just sorry, Jack, just a problem here for the, the number 48. Where is he on that the grid? He's getting Gavin wheeled off. Planck, that is. So the Gavin Plonk, the Frenchman. A little bit of drama because he's a Red Bull rookie as well. He went quite well over there in the Austrian rounds. But uh, just going back to Max Cook, of course, he's he's done pretty well this year. Someone uh -oh. stored it on the grid. Is that Raffaele Fusco? Is it? Can't quite make out in the background, but he was a very I, frustrating I th figure, I think of course. I think it was the number 69 of Raffaele Fusco. We'll uh, confirm that to you. Hopefully the cameras will pan back to it. But once again, just going back to Max Cook, this year has been extremely impressive, obviously, those two seventh places. But in free practice and qualifying, he's really been doing a lot of running on his own. As we see Gavin Plonk come out of the pit lane, he's obviously got that Honda rebooted. So he should be able to take his group position normal because he's out ahead of the safety car, so no worries. Yeah, it's an interesting point about Max Cook because he has, in both races in Estoril and in Portimao, he, didn't, he wasn't in the league group from the start, but as the league group pulled away, he made his way to the fourth route and the second route, but they managed to reel them in brilliantly. And uh, you brilliantly caught that, Jack. It is the number 69 of Raffaele Fusco will now have to start from pit lane. So that's a disaster for the rider who was meant to start P16. So he's going to lose out there. Air temperature, similar to what it was for the Moto2 European Championship boys, a steady 23 degrees Celsius. Feels warmer than that. I'm not sure. No, it doesn't feel too bad. It's certainly not as hot as yesterday, no, is it? No, it's certainly not, no. Yes, yesterday was up around 30 degrees uh, around this time, one in the afternoon local time. So, uh, yeah, much cooler here. Hopefully, uh, we'll see some of the guys giving their tyres a bit more abuse because of it. So, uh. <laughs> so there's your championship standings then. Acosta and Ortega, as we've mentioned, level on points on 45, a P1 and a P2, each from the opening two races of the season. Will someone else be standing on the top step of the podium? There's the number 37 of Acosta. 
coming off the back of two perfect weekends at the Red Bull Ring. And here's the long lap penalty lane. We saw Lorenzo fell on trying that out. Well, not trying out, having to try it out, being forced to try out through a jump start in Portimao was Acosta. Goes through it, that's Ethan Guevara also going through it as well. It's probably quite a good idea for the riders to practice because you never know in the race, in a battle, it's easy to exceed track limits even if it's not your fault. And hopefully the riders who do have to do it can replicate that of Johan Zarko in the Czech Republic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stunning ride in that one. It was absolutely brilliant. Never, ever <laughs> get bored of watching that one. Yeah, interestingly, he said he'd been practicing around the roundabouts in his local town. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, well, I'm doing a little bit of uh, extreme riding on the roads back home. <laughs> there he is, the okay. number seven, tapping his KTM full fuel tank. Yeah, get himself psyched up, completely opposite to that man, Pedro Acosta. Chilled and in the zone, just staring down to turn one. The same as Izan Guevara, very relaxed. Right, the green flag waves then, and we'll soon be underway for the Moto3 Junior World Championship, boys. The red lights are on, and they'll go off. And it's a good start from Daniel Munoz, the number seven on the pole position. But it wasn't such a good start for Ifan Guevara. He got a slow getaway for the number 28, and it'll Costa will slide second. And that is Matsuyama. What a start from the junior talent team rider. He is up into third from ninth on the grid. What a start from Matsuyama, Whoa. the rookie. Who's that? Is that David Munoz? It is. Yeah. Steaming into turn two. Yeah, definitely David Munoz coming down the inside. I think he picked up one or two places. Not too sure if it worked out how he wanted, but Daniel Hargado's back underneath him as Spinelli is chasing those two up. Whoa, someone's way out wide. That's Isan Guevara. So Guevara, he's made a right meal at the start and actually he's behind his teammates now. So really not a good getaway for Isan Guevara, the reigning ETC champion. It was a good getaway, however, for Pedro Acosta. He's looking like he's going to go down the inside of race leader, Daniel Munoz. Yes, he's got it done even before the braking zone. So Pedro Acosta, Xavi Artigas has got to get a wriggle on if he wants to keep with the man he's level on points with. Yeah, that's the exact start Pedro Acosta would have wanted. Got into second, got a clean getaway, and now he's passed Daniel Munoz into third, down the back straight into turn eight we go. We saw Spinelli crash out here in warm-up. That's a good start from Kazuki Mizaki as well. I'll just quickly look down to find where he was on the grid. And I can't find him at the minute. But anyway, it's a good start from Kazuki Mizaki. On 17th on the grid he was, and he's all the way up into the top 10 now. So, yeah, great start from Mizaki. Yeah, that crash for Spinelli was in qualifying, not warm up as a main mistake there. So, as we round into the Jorge Lorenzo corner, it's Pedro Acosta leading from the front. We're so used to seeing that, aren't we, as Artigas makes a great move up the inside of David Salvador, the man third in the championship, being overtaken by the man who is second in the championship and joint leader to the race leader, the number 37, who's starting to pull clear now as they come over the line to a complete lap one. He's nearly up to five tenths, half a second. For Pedro Costa is Daniel Holgado now takes P4 away from David Salvador. Oh, that, that looks like Gavin Plonk, yeah, the man that stalled on the grid. So... Goes from bad to worse for Gaban Plonk. It's an early end. I'm not too sure where he's crashed there. It might be one of the fast right-handers coming towards the end of the lap. But speaking of fast, Pedro Acosta has cleared off. He's already pulled about half a second on the pack as Xavi Artigas looks to make easy work of Daniel Munoz. Yes, he does. He just drops it over the nose of the pole sitter. So Munoz down to third. Looks like he might be demoted to fourth. Holgado made a pretty racy start as well. As we see David Salvador lining the pair of them up with a big slipstream. He might go down the inside of three of them. Well, not quite. He's going to get two of them by the looks of it. So that's Gerard Rio up into third place. He started fifth on the grid. Oh, oh no, that's driver. a lot of riders down. Well, that might be that's Adrian Ethan Fernandez. Guevara. Is that Fernandez? I think it is, Jack. Yeah, that's Ethan Guara Fernandez. Can't quite see who the one is. So that's a disaster for the man who started second. The rain needs to jump, but it is Adrian Fernandez and Spinelli. Oh, and Spinelli's Spinelli down. Hopefully, he's just got a stinger on his leg there. Sitting up. Oh, it's a disaster for Adrian Fernandez. He's the man third in the championship, level on points with David Salvador. Yeah, and he's, he's got a, a flat rear tyre as well there, so certainly not going to be able to remount that Husqvarna machine and carry on. So, big, big shame for those three riders as they crash out at turn six. Hopefully, Spinelli is okay. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happened there. It's turn six, and when you're in a, a big group of riders like Moto3 normally always is, it's very easy to get tangled up down into the Danny Pedro's corner. But hopefully Spinelli, he is up on his feet, but hopefully he is all okay and ready to go tomorrow. But it's now Artigas 
who was taken over at the front. That's not a good sight for Spinelli, who we mentioned crashed at turn six. Here's a replay. Just going to catch the back of it. Yeah, oh, it looks like quite. someone's took the front and possibly taken the two of the riders down with them. We can't speculate too much. Couldn't quite see from that camera angle, but it is definitely Ethan Guevara, Adrian Fernandez, and Spinelli who are sadly not going to pursue at the front of this race. But someone who is pursuing at the front of the race is the number 43 of Xavi Artigas. Artigas. Is he going to hold P1 into turn six? No, he's not, because Daniel Holgado gets the run in. And then I think Acosta's going to make a move up the inside of Artigas too. He is, so Artigas loses two places in the space of one corner. It's now Daniel Holgado who leads the way with the top four just stretching clear. I wonder if Ooh. that crash just interrupted the guys in the chasing pack, because it's David Munoz now who's second back, and that's ah. Kazuki Masaki who's had to pull up. That's a huge shame for Masaki. That looks like bike issues rather than a crash. I don't see any scuffs on his... <laughs> that was pretty springboardy was over the tile wall there. Yeah. Yeah, Not frustration happy. with the bike there from Misaki. So, bad luck for the former World Championship runner. Obviously, he made a cracking start from 17th on the grid. He was all the way up until, I think, about 9th as they crossed the line for the last lap. Head in hands. Can barely believe it. Yeah, we were talking about a lot, a lot about Red Bull. Okay, so who's that gone down? That's a junior tendency bike. I think that's Takuma Matsuyama. That looked like a quick crash for... Oh, and it's oh. Scott Ogden as well. So two junior talent team riders have crashed out. That is Scott Ogden, the number 31. And I'm very, very sure I saw Takuma Matsuyama's bike yep. as well. They're both dropping down the timing screen. Yeah, so that's a disaster. I wonder what's happened there. Hopefully they've not collected each other, but... I, I do hope not. I know they were running around that ninth and 10th position place. So Scott's got his head in his hands as though he can't believe what's just happened. Hopefully... Those two guys haven't tangled with each other. We should be getting a replay of that, sure enough. Yeah, Matsuyama. so the, the weekend goes from bad to worse for the junior talent team riders. Unfortunately, that's not good to see, but that leaves now Max Cook in 11th place. Yeah, and that's a good start from Max. Yeah, and then Tachikorn Bissari is in 20th, so they're the only two junior talent team riders on the grid now, with Scott Ogden walks back up to pit lane and Takuma Matsuyama after a season's best qualifying is now out of the race. Bad luck for the junior talent team boys but they'll be raring to go again on Sunday as we now turn attention back to the front and it's Pedro Costa, no not oh. quite, Holgado around the outside keeps it clean. Yeah great move, good riding that. from Holgado. Fantastic move as you say Elliot and Holgado is a man that finished sixth here last year in race one uh, and he's, he's pretty quick so obviously he's got some form of pedigree at this circuit. We know he's fast. He's uh, not quite been battling right at the sharp end this year, but he hasn't been far off. So this might be the start of Daniel Cargado's claim to try and stamp some authority on this Moto3 class. Yeah, you might be right there. The number 96 going very well indeed, as we now see a lead group of, I think it's seven riders down to the 92 Australia Galithia bike of Diogo Moreira. Oh, that's David Salvador making an audacious move up the inside of Jared Rio. I thought he was going to surely run right there, but he got it stopped to the apex. That's a fantastic move from the number 38, who now moves up into fourth place. And I mentioned Adrian Fernandez and David Salvador were the only two men to get a podium. And they are the two men who are closest challengers to Artigas and Acosta in the championship. So if David Salvador can, as we see, I think that was Holgado, Acosta and Salvador running wide, on the exit of turn four, so they've got to be careful that they don't repeat that offence, otherwise they'll be facing a long lap penalty further into the race. Yeah, just looking over the timing screens and I'm seeing Daniel Munoz drop down our timing screens, the pole man, so I don't know what's happened. Well, he's actually still on circuit there, so possibly just a little glitch with the transponder. So it seems that Daniel Munoz still is in the race. Yeah, he's just he's popped back, back up. up now. He's back into P8. So yeah, not too sure what happened there, but uh, he is fine. He's in P8. So Artigas leads then from Pedro Acosta. We've said that plenty of times over the last few weeks, haven't we? Our friends Jack Appiard and Lewis Sudeby commentated in Estoril with them two finishing first and second, and we were privileged enough to watch them do battle in Portimao as they finish first and second again. But yeah. they're not going to have it all their own way by the looks of things because like it was in Portimao and Estoril, this really is a league group of several riders. We see Scott Ogden clearly distraught. 
Yeah, big shame for Scott. It was looking like he could have had a pretty good challenge in that top group this weekend. As we see David Salvador try and just try under the United Six of Daniel Hogado, and so he does. So, as we come across the line for 11 laps to go, it looks as though Pedro Costa might just try and take a look. Ooh, yes, he's under him. So Pedro Costa oh, up into the top, wow. and Holgado was seriously late on the brakes there. Absolute demon on the brakes. Storms his way back past David Salvador, but not Ooh. for long. Yes, he does. He just holds him off. Yeah, nice, clean battle in there from David Salvador and Holgado. Holgado making his move, sticking to turn one. That was a great move from the number 96, as we see numerous riders again running wide at the edge of turn four. That was Daniel Munoz, he pulls it running wide. As we see, Filippo Palazzi has crashed on the number 97. Here he is on the screen, so he's obviously remounted. Not sure where that will have been, but... Now focus back on the leaders, and it's Salvador again. <laughs> oh, that was tight at turn six, getting the better of Holgado <laughs> as the duo battle it out for the remaining podium position and it's similar names to what we saw at the front in Portimao it's Salvador, Acosta, Artigas, Holgado unfortunately for Adrian Fernandez he's not at the front of this race after crashing out at turn six we haven't seen a replay of that actually, so we're still not sure what happened there as we just look back this lead group of seven is 1.6 clear of... Oh, <laughs> David, sorry, Elliot, just to cut over you there. David Munoz gave his leg a massive whack about three or four times, telling the guys, come on, stop stop mucking about. We've got to keep with this front group. It's getting really <laughs> animated there. <laughs> that was sensational to see. Hogardo again late on the brakes and up the inside of David Salvador. They are really going. Hammer and Tong in third and fourth as they come across to complete another lap, and it'll be 10 laps to go here in a great Moto3 Junior World Championship race. I was just looking at the timing screen to see how far back Daniel Munoz was on this lead group. It includes, obviously, Munoz, Julian Garcia, Jose Rodo, and Max Cook. So let's see if they can close down. I think they are, look, because that's yeah, Max Cook there at the back of the group. We've almost got one group now, to be fair, haven't we? Yeah. And uh, in the group behind them, actually, I've just noticed them on the timing screens. Lorenzo fell on. He's all the way up to 14th after starting a whopping 32nd on the grid. So Lorenzo fell on. He's raced his heart out so far. And there's a man who'll be pouring his heart out. Adrian Fernandez with his brother there, Raul, obviously races in Moto3 World Championship. And, uh, yeah, looking... Pretty upset and annoyed as he was on for a good race today. Yeah, I'm sure Raul Fernandez can offer some helping hand to his younger brother, Adrian. And Adrian looks like he'll be on the Moto3 World Championship scene sooner rather than later as we get a track limits warning. No surprise there for the number seven, Daniel Munoz. We've seen him running wide on the exit of turn four at least a couple of times. And now he's got a track limits warning. So the number seven there at the forefront of the chasing group, I say at the forefront, but it looks like Julian Garcia has just passed him into turn nine. We'll have to wait and see when the camera pans back. Yes, he did. There he is, 658. Squadra Corsa man into P9. Now he's going to lead the way in trying to bring those quartet of riders into the lead group. Yeah, and Jose Julian Garcia, is, uh, he's had some proper pace this year in 2020. Uh, he's finished fourth and fifth so far in the two races we've had. Uh, in this season, so it, I wouldn't be surprised if he can close that gap in um, of about, what is it, about three or four tenths now, half a second just about uh, up to this top group of six, seven, sorry. If they keep squabbling like they, like they did in Bortom Hours, Holgado just taps the back of his KTM machine and says to Salvador, let's stop scrapping and let's focus on trying to catch the leaders. As we see Mario Adjuri mentioned his injury on the grid, unfortunate for the Indonesian rider. He broke three bones in his left hand and he misses the action this weekend after a crash in qualifying one yesterday. So that's unfortunate for the Indonesian rider. Yeah, a weekend to forget for Mario Aji and the junior talent team. We'll just look out the window of our commentary box and see a few of the personnel just discussing. Obviously, a bit of a poor weekend for them so far. Hopefully they can turn it around tomorrow with the four riders they still have on track. Anyway, back to the front, and it's the top two in the championship that are still in the top two places. Pedro Acosta and Javier Artigas have actually just switched again with uh, Artigas looking... No, not quite. I thought he was maybe good, 
try and run it around the outside. They dive up inside of turn nine. A man diving up the inside of turn nine, though, is David Salvador. He goes back up into P3. Will, yes, Hogardo responds up into turn 10. So, proper scrap between those two. They've been scrapping the whole race pretty much. And uh, I imagine that David Salvador will retaliate in about two corners' time once oh, again. Absolutely. <laughs> Hogardo was tapping the back of his bike a lap ago, and obviously. David, David Salvador, as you can expect, yeah. isn't listening and he still is not taking the advice of his Spanish competitor as now David Salvador tucks into the tailpipes of the number 43 and he looks like he's got a little bit of a stripping going on, but I'm not sure if he's going to be close enough down to stay on. But look out for Holgado because he's normally late on the brakes and I say that about Whoa. Holgado and that was a close moment there for David Salvador, got the rear all lit up into the braking area and he was lucky not to collect the number 43 of Artigas oh. there and now he's lost out to David Munoz on the number 64 machine so not the turn one David Salvador would have been expecting and hoping for. No, certainly not. If you thought he was going to slot nicely back into uh, sixth position just ahead of uh, David Munoz there, he certainly wasn't because David just ran him out of road and said, no, you can go behind me, mate, no problems. So here he is just on the brakes. It looks like the rear just picks up and it goes a little bit sideways. Yeah, and just, just set, unsettles him and just kicks him out of the seat a little bit. So uh, nothing too much for him to worry about, but it does mean he's just dropped to the back of this leading pack now. Gerard Rio then having a look at Daniel Holgado. So Holgado saw Salvador move out of his way and he was like, OK, maybe I've got some, got some breathing space. But nope, Gerard Rio has come past. And is he going to come past Artigas? No, not quite to turn it. That would be an audacious move into the fast left-hander. But it doesn't look like Artigas and Acosta are going to have it all the way around. As I say, that, that's exactly what's happening because Gerard Rio is now up into second. And is that Holgado getting into third? Yes, it is. So Artigas goes from P2 to P4 in a matter of seconds. And now it's Gerard Rio leading this gaggle of riders in chasing Pedro Acosta. As we come round the fast turn 12 and into the Jorge Lorenzo corner, is anyone going to make a move? We've seen... David Salvador making moves there and he does it yeah. once more. And it looks like he's going to... Oh, no, I thought Diogo Moreira was maybe going to get squeezed out by David Monyoff was there. And also, Diogo Moreira, <laughs> they're giving him, come on, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually been Diogo Moreira who's kind of been the, the invisible man in this group. We haven't really said too much about him. He's just been sat back there watching all these guys uh, scrap away and, well, do this sort of thing. Oh, as David, uh, David Salvador goes for it again, but not quite. Chevy Artigas, oh, oh, Max oh that's a huge one from Max. Oh, oh, that's a big one. Yeah, that's not looking good for oh, He's Max. instantly holding his leg, so... That's a terrible one from Max Cook. That's not looking good for Max Cook and the junior talent team. There he goes from bad to worse, unfortunately. Let's hope it's just knocked the wind out of his house and Max is not injured there, but... Yeah, he was looking good in, uh, in around P10 was Max, so let's hope for Max's sake that he can Whoa, that get away really from the incident. Gross. Yeah, it just goes to show how quickly your fortunes can change. And I don't know if you've spotted that one there at Turn 6, Elliot, but it was really close between Chevy Artigas's front wheel and I think it was the, the rear wheel of Gerard Rieu. It was seriously close, as we see Max Cook still just on the ground there. This could Hope be a red flag situation. I'm surprised it's, it's not already with Max Cook lying on the ground on the edge of turn two, but we'll it keep... could well be. Keep an eye out. The riders have just crossed the line. Let's have a look. Here's yeah, nasty nice. high side for Max, and he lands yeah. heavily on his right side. Yeah, that's a nasty one for Max. Hopefully nothing too serious. As we go back to the front, and now this group has actually all closed up. We see David Salvador coming up the inside of Chavi Artigas up into the top four. So Artigas is being shuffled back, you know. He's not having the same fortunes as Pedro Acosta, who's just been at the front of this, minding his own business for the last, well, pretty much the whole race, really. Um, obviously, he got into the lead on lap two, and he hasn't really looked back, as we see number 64. Oh, not quite. David Munoz looked up the inside of Holgado, but couldn't quite make the move. Yeah, this is what we saw from... Costa in the Red Bull Ruckus, isn't it? He was in a in a big group of riders, but he was always at the front or in the lead group of four or there or thereabouts, and he was doing the exact same thing again. He's looking very strong as the number 37, so it's going to take some beating to get the better of him today. I think Max Cook was safely taken to the side of the track, so we wish that Max hasn't sustained any serious injuries. We'll 
keep you updated if we hear anything with five and a half laps to go. It's now Gerard Ryu who takes the lead and David Salvador moves up the inside of Daniel Holgado into third place. And Artigas is now down into sixth place. And you can see the Costa at the front. So with five and a half laps to go, Artigas is going to have to start making some progress. But like we've seen on the, the Moto3 World Championship stage, it really is between any one of these riders for the win, and it can all change in a second. Oh, that's good to see at least. Max is on his feet. Yeah, really good to see. Hopefully it's just a bit of a, a stinger and some bruising for Max rather than anything too serious. But yeah, fantastic to see the young Brit back up on his feet. He was having a really good ride and he's been doing fantastically this year so far. So we wish him well and we hope to see him back as soon as possible. Yeah, hopefully he's back on track tomorrow. We just saw there David Salvador running wide on the exit of turn 12. So Salvador has got to be careful. He doesn't do that too often because... Oh, who's that? Which... Is that is one of the... Is it fell on? It is yeah, fell on. So Fallon must have been, didn't quite catch where he was, but he was up in top 14 in, yeah. in that kind of third group, if you like. So uh, disaster for Lorenzo Fallon after coming, oh, he was actually ahead of uh, Sarif Dinansman. So he must have been up in uh, 11th place. So great recovery ride up until that point, obviously, for Fallon. So uh, disaster for him after coming through from 32nd on the grid. Yeah, we just saw in that shot as well, Ethan Guevara, he's recovered to P12 after being involved in that turn six incident with Adrian Fernandez and Spinelli. So Guevara's up to P12, so that's a good salvage job done by the reigning European Talent Cup champion. There's now Holgado holds second place, but still a Costa lead in. Every time he's lost the lead, he's bitten back straight away, as we see David Holgado Salvador. running wide and David Salvador saying, thank you very much, I'll take Gerard Rio and I'll move past you to Daniel Holgado. And now it's second, but that's given a Costa just a slight advantage now over Jason Packers, Artiga still sits in fifth place. He's just watching it all unfold at the minute with four and a half laps remaining, but that gap from Costa to Salvador is immediately wiped out. Yeah, no, no sort of gaps being created here, is there? We've got a, a train of 10 riders now. It's a 20-wheeler at the front of this race with the man in 10th place being Jose Antonio Rueda on one of one more of the Australia Galicia talent team bikes. So yeah, going pretty well with those blue machines. But back at the front, it is still Pedro Acosta. As you look at Xavi Artigas trying to possibly make a move on Gerard Ryu, no, not quite. Daniel Holgado though, oh, he's maybe gonna get forced out. They're gonna go elbow to elbow up the straight. That was David Munoz running wide again. I think it was him, if I remember correctly, that had a track limits warning, actually no. Now I've seen the number seven, it was Daniel Munoz. So, but that was David Munoz running wide at the final corner, so. Like we've mentioned numerous times, the riders have got to be careful, especially on the last lap of, as we've seen earlier on today in the European Talent Cup race. You can't run out onto the green stuff there, so that's on the exit of every corner, so you can't run wide, and if you do on the last lap, then you're automatically demoted a penalty, and that was Artigas and Holgado running onto the green Astra turf. So we just got to keep an eye on that. We'll obviously let you know if anything pops up on our timing screens to do with any penalties or track limit warnings as Acosta leads again down the back straight into Danny Pedroza corner. Is Salvador going to go for a move? Yes, he is. Under Gerard Rio, nicely done from David Salvador. Yeah, Salvador's brilliant down there to turn six, and he's really got a, a good feeling with the front end of that KTM to be able to just nail it onto the brakes every time and just point it to the apex and dive under. And as I say that, point into the apex and dive it under. I think Gerard Rio just retaliated. Yes, he did. So back up into second, not having any of it. But all this is doing is allowing the number 37 of Pedro Costa, as we see Jose Julian Garcia slide his way up into fourth place or fifth place? Fifth place. Fourth place, I do apologize. So yeah, Jose Julian Garcia looks like he's got a wriggle on trying to make his statement for the top podium places. Yeah, the 658 Squad Corsa rider is doing the business here in the latter stages as we come into the Jorge Lorenzo corner and he's up into third place is now Julian Garcia. That's David Salvador picked off and now he's got Gerard Rio in his sights, but all this, like you say, Jack, is doing wonders for Pedro Acosta. He'll be rubbing his hands with this and what's his lead over the line? It's stretched up to 0.479 seconds, so nearly half a second with three laps to go. David Salvador again moves up the inside at turn one, but oh, a nice move. Garcia gets him back and then runs in a little bit closer. Daniel Holgado there gets close to Artigas and then gets close to David Salvador, but 
Oh, he has got the job done. Fair play to Holgado, but all this scrapping is helping Acosta. But oh, he's very wide there, Acosta. Wide. Very, very wide. As we see a replay going on into turn one, this was just happening as we saw Salvador go underneath Garcia, but then eventually runs wide and Garcia gets him on the cutback. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the gap is from Acosta to Ryu now because Acosta was well, well wide. Still fairly decent as now Artigas moves up into second place at turn six and now he sets his sights and <laughs> says, boys, stick behind me, we've got a man to catch and you wouldn't put it past Artigas to be the man to do that because he can see there that is his championship rival as we see number 38 flash up on the screen for a chat limits warming that is David Salvador yep so the man who's been getting everyone on the brakes it looks like he's been running it a little bit wider and onto the green as well so he's got a track limits warning he needs to be careful not to pick up a time penalty or a long lap so anyway it looks as though oh, Xavi Artigas really? may, he's it. just set his PB sector in sector three Xavi Artigas has so Full gas for Artigas, he's on the march and he's dragging them all up to Pedro Acosta out front. He is, and I think it will do the riders good to at least sit behind Artigas for at least the next half a lap because it does look like he is closing down the number 37 of Pedro Acosta. What's the gap over the line? It's three tenths Ooh. and it's the fastest lap of the race for Xavi Artigas, a 46.9 compared to a 47.3 for your race leader. So. It's Artigas who now is reeling in the race leader and there's your championship standings just as a reminder it's the top two in the race, the top two in the championship and now Holgado has got the better of Gerard Rio for third place as a track limit warning and flashes up for the number 95 that's Jose Antonio Rueda at the back of this group. Yeah so Artigas he's flipped the switch and he's put it into overdrive he's 46.9 fastest lap of the race as we do say and the second fastest man on track that last time round was Daniel Hargado just behind him only one tenth behind so Artigas he's going after the man that sits at the top but he's on level points with him Ooh, oh he's a little bit hot wide. I think he's yeah, he's going to get away with it he just made it back to the racing line on the exit but that's not what Artigas would have wanted the gap was down to just a tenth and it looks like it's just stretched out to a couple of tenths after running wide but he's right on him now oh, that fantastic that gap's gone there. in turn eight what what riding there from Artigas through the fast sweeping left hander and now we go into a couple of slower right handers before we exit the stadium section and into the fast right handers before we get down into turn 11 and Daniel Holgado is closed right up on the number 43 of Artigas now Holgado is looking good here but who is going to lead onto the last lap? We're coming down into that corner. Artigas looks behind him. I'm not sure why. And he's going for the race lead. And he makes it stick. <laughs> but Holgado says thank you very much. He does a Miguel Oliveira on the two of them. And he's through and will lead onto the last lap. But Acosta's in the slipstream. Acosta is pulling out. But Holgado goes defensive. Who's going to get it into turn one? Acosta. That's he got a good drive onto the front straight and he will lead onto the last lap into turn one with Artigas now behind Algado, who just set the fastest lap of the race, as you can see. And now it seems like it's a, a group of four for the win with Gerard Rio latching onto the back. This is going to go down to the last corner, Jack. Yeah, it certainly is. It's going to be from one of these four, isn't it? And Gerard Rio is just sat there in fourth place watching this battle, wondering whether he can be able to pick Holgado. up the scraps. Holgado, Holgado goes through the lead, into lead at turn five, but it's going to compromise him on the run down to turn six on the straight. So don't be surprised if you see the odd dive bomb or two. Watch Gerard Rio, who's going to get a free bike slipstream coming through. Oh, it looks like Pedro Acosta might have just got them on the straight, but Xavi Artigas is up the inside. Oh, oh disaster. Championship leader is down. Pedro Acosta, he's been clipped on the handlebar and he's crashed out at turn six on the final lap. Oh, that was tight into turn six, like you mentioned, Jack, and Gerard Rio was up the inside of Holgado and then Holgado got squeezed in two. Oh, uh, Pedro Acosta and Pedro Acosta is down. Can he remount and potentially pick up some points? But that's left Artigas to pick up what looks like will be his second 25-point haul of the season. There's Pedro Costa, disaster for the number 37. Yeah, and he's going to drop oh. all the way down out of the points. What a shame. Here's Gerard Rio holding off Holgado. They were both involved in that turn six incident. But it is going to be Xavi Artigas if he doesn't make a mistake at the Jorge Lorenzo corner. He's in pretty hot, but Holgado is making his move up into turn 
13 and up to second, but oh, oh who was that running wide? And that's oh, that, is that David Munoz or Daniel? It's anyway, quite... Artigas comes across the line to win his second race of the season. Holgado second, Ryu third as drama unfolds on the final lap. I'm just having a look. I think it was the two. And both of, both of the Munoz boys. boys. So racing riders who were off. Oh, Big stand-up wheelie from Holgado. He's lap. pretty happy with that. Of course, that's his first podium. He's gone fifth, fourth, and second now. And there's Pedro Acosta, just consulate Pedro Acosta. He's lost it after leading pretty much the whole race. He'll be distraught with that, but he can come back tomorrow and try it again. Whew, catch your breath after that. That was scintillating stuff all the way down to the final lap, and we said it would come down to the final corner, but it didn't. Artigas managed to break clear after some turn six drama that involved that man, number 96, Danny Holgado, who finishes second. A great ride with Gerard Ryu third. He picks up his first podium of the season with Artigas, a, a monumental 25-point haul, and with Acosta suffering his first DNF of the season after finishing second in Esriel and first in Portimao. That's going to give Xavi Artigas a nice 25-point lead in the championship standings, it should be 25. It'll be around around that mark anyway. My maths aren't quite good enough to do some mental maths. There he is, Gerard Ryu. Takes his first podium of the season, and that's his first podium in the last couple of years because he finished P4 in Barcelona last year. That was his best result. As we see David Munoz strolling back into pit lane, there was contact at the final corner. It's very similar it's what we saw in the Moto3 World Championship with John McPhee. Here we have the replay, just watching the background, and it's Julian Garcia who tags David Munoz coming out of the final corner. I have to say that's a racing incident. And unfortunate for David Munoz that he crashes out, and I think it was Daniel Munoz who ran on, who flashed across that screen at the final corner. He has taken the line in 22nd, your poor man, so it must have been... A mistake at the final corner for the number seven. Not quite sure what happened. The cameras didn't quite pick it up. Let's have a replay. Yeah, so here we go then into turn six. Holgado getting it out of shape on the brakes. And then Gerard Ryu was up the inside. That forced Holgado to sit up. And the unfortunate man on the outside was that man, Pedro Acosta. He crashed out of the race. That's a disaster for your former championship leader, no longer your championship leader. After four first place finishes in Austria, he has to regroup and go again tomorrow, but there is no such troubles for this man. Javier Artigas, his second win of the season, back to winning ways after missing out in Portimao by just 17 thousandths of a second to Pedro Acosta. He gets congratulations from his team. Daniel Holgado will finish second. That's his best result of the year. P5 in Estoril was followed by a P4 in Portimao. So Daniel Holgado has got his podium tally up and running in 2020. A great ride from the Open Bank Gaspar team rider. That'll move up, move him up in the championship standings after Adrian Fernandez unfortunately crashed out. There's Gerard Ryu. P3 for the number 67 AGR team rider. What's this going to be a replay of? It's the final corner again. There you can see David Munoz in the background just losing out there and sliding out of contention. It is pretty much a copy and paste from what we saw in the Moto3 World Championship in the, uh, in the Spanish Grand Prix. Unfortunately, that's the nature of the race and in the Moto3 classes. It's very close racing and unfortunately crashing is part of the game, but the number 43 gives his chest a pump and he'll be pumped after that one. And he'll be pumped to go again tomorrow for round four at the Circuito de Jerez Angel Nieto. Now your clear championship leader. And there's Daniel Holgado following him into turn one, nodding his head in appreciation.
Those three riders, including Gerard Rio, will be standing on the podium. And they'll go away, regroup, have a look at some data. And we can hear from your race winner now. It's Xavi Artigas down with Jack Gorst in Park Fermi. Xavi Artigas, your second win of the season, you're now championship leader. How was that last lap battle for you? Yeah, the race was very difficult because all the week have a very high temperatures and was difficult, but stay here is really, really good for the championship also, my second victory. And we will see uh, tomorrow the two races and say thank you all support me, my family, my sponsors and the team because he works uh, very, very good during the week and say thank you for the Leopard Imparada junior team. And in your own language? Muy contento de estar aquí después de, de todo el fin de semana, de toda la calor que hacía. Eh, wow, muy contento. Mi segunda victoria de, del año es bueno para el campeonato. Y a ver qué tal se notan las carreras de mañana, ya que hoy ha sido difícil, pero, pero muy contento con el resultado. De darle las gracias al equipo, a la familia y al Leopard Impala Junior Team. Congratulations, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. We will see Artigas tomorrow, and here's what just happened moments ago. He didn't get the greatest start from P4, did the number 43 Leopard rider is Polman. Daniel Munoz led into turn one from Pedro Acosta. But a big group form, and Artigas soon made his move up, up inside David Salvador at the final corner. As the two junior talent team boys of Scott Ogden and Takuma Matsuyama crashed out in the opening stages at Turn 13, unfortunate day for the junior tan team. There was David Salvador who was making some great moves around the whole racetrack here in RF, to be fair. But that turn one incident was soon followed by this incident for Max Cook. The nasty high side at turn two. Thankfully, the British rider was able to walk away. Hopefully he'll be fit and ready for race day tomorrow. We saw Lorenzo fell on, crashing out at turn nine. And here's one of the moves from David Salvador that I was talking about with Garcia getting him straight back. And here it is then, the, the last lap incident and drama down at turn six. And it was Pedro Acosta, the unfortunate party who crashed out, which ultimately handed the number 43 of Artigas the race win, his second of the season. We saw in the background there, David Munoz crashing out at the last corner of the last lap. But it's the layup hard rider of Xavi Artigas. Surely we'll be seeing him on the Movo 3 World Championship stage sooner rather than later. A really, really impressive young Spaniard who extends his championship lead ahead of two races for the Moto 3 Junior World Championship on Sunday. Gerard Rio comes to the podium then. Great ride from the Spaniards. His best qualifying result of the season backed up by his best race result of the season. Daniel Holgado, another best result of the season for the Spaniard. He finishes second, but it's this man, Artigas, who claims the 25-point haul here on Saturday in Jerez. Miembro de la Comisión de Velocidad de la FIM, el encargado de entregar el premio al team manager. Trophy, again presented by Mr. Jean-Marc Denus. De nuevo, Mr. Jean-Marc Denis. Da la enhorabuena ahora al tercer clasificado, primer podio de la temporada para Gerard Rio. Rio lost his first podium trophy of the season. You can hear the team celebrating down in Park Verme. There's Daniel Holgado. A well-earned second place for the Spaniard who moves up in the championship standings. And then Xavi Artigas collects his second winner's trophy of the season, his third rostrum in a row. And he's looking really strong in the 2020 Junior World Championship, as he did in the 2019 one. And he gets a nice 500 euro check. Then we'll now hear the Spanish national anthem ring out around the circuito de Jerez.
Enhorabuena para Xavier Tigas, es el líder después de tres carreras en esta categoría de Finch Repsol de Moto3. Hacemos so Xavier Artigas, el... now the sole Seco, championship el... leader in the Moto3 Junior World Championship as the spray of the champagne or the lemonade, depending on how, how old you are. <laughs> As Daniel Holcado chooses just to throw it over everyone else instead. But yeah, great ride, great little battle in that race. Unfortunate for Pedro Acosta, just saw his bike being wheeled back through the pits. Um, no real damage to it, so all good for them to fix it up. Ready to go again tomorrow, where they have two races instead. So Xavi Artigas from Holgado from Ryu. Good ride from Ryu from Salvador Moreira. Rueda, Garcia, Izan Guevara, great recovery, back up to eighth, ahead of Sire Rifidin Asman. Clement Rouge, well, we skipped right through that one. Clement Rouge, Joel Kelso, Josh Watley, Julian Garal, Patrick Humbusari, Leonardo Ticini, Sho Nishimura, Senna Aguisiozzi in 17th, Raffaele Fusco in 18th from Hikaru Aritu, Aritu, sorry, Hikaru Arita in 18th, Alejandro Diaz. Philip Rehack and Daniel Munoz all the way down there in 22nd after that last lap drama. So in the championship, as we say, Xavi Artigas is the sole leader with 70 points from Pedro Acosta, 45. Daniel Holgado in third from Salvador. Jose Julian Garcia, Jared Ryu, Adrian Fernandez, Izan Guevara and Diogo Moreira ran up the top nine in the championship. Max Cook, after his unfortunate crash, will update you as soon as we have details on him. Jose Antonio Rueda, as we just see, actually just popping up race direction. The start delayed due to safety conditions. I imagine that will be due to possibly one of the air fences from the crash. So start delayed for the second ETC race. We'll update you as soon as we have a official time as to what pit lane will open and start will take place and how many laps. So anyway, after 16 laps of drama, Xavi Artigas is now the dominant force in Moto3 Junior World Championship. Pedro Acosta will certainly feel as though he left one on the table. An incident and no fault of his own meant that he DNF'd. So tomorrow, with two races for those boys, it's certainly going to be a proper dogfight as to who's going to come out on top. Like, that one was almost impossible to predict, wasn't it, Elliot? There were so many guys. There was a, a group of 10 at one point, uh, and it went all the way down to that man crossing the finish line first. Number 43, Xavi Artigas, on the Leopard Impala junior team bike. Yep, another typical Moto3 race here in her effort, it's that man who walks away with the 25 points, but the man just behind him, the number 37, will be back trying to get revenge on Sunday. Next up is the European Moto, sorry, the European Talent Cup riders who will go for their race two on Saturday. mentioned the start is slightly delayed pit lane opens in 10 minutes time we've just got the notification up on our timing screen so we shall see you see you shortly for hawkers european talent cup action